Are you new to resin 3D printing or thinking about getting into the hobby? In this video, I'm gonna share 10 things that I've learned from my two years of 3D printing. This is information that I really wish I had known when I first started. So hopefully, this will save you the frustration of having to learn things the hard way. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. Starting off with tip number one, is just to simply understand the difference between resin printing and FDM or filament printing. You may already understand what these two things are, but it's also really important to know the, the differences and the limitations of each. Typically, resin printing is much better for fine detail, like in miniatures and models, whereas filament printing is better for product parts, structural prints, things that need to be used in everyday situations or be a, of a stronger build. Now, this is a big generalization and things are changing every year. For example, FDM printing is getting much better at the finer details that resin is so good at. And there are some resins that are meant to be stronger and used for products. And I have had some luck with using resin for certain products. For example, I made this miniature holder for painting that I got from Loot Studios and it's completely out of resin and be but because of the thickness it's pretty strong but for the most part when you're thinking of resin printing think fine details like miniatures and don't expect to use it for products around the house that need to hold weight or need to be really strong. Tip number two is to understand that resin 3D printing is harder than you might think it is. Yes, in many cases it's easy, it does a lot of the work for you, but you will come across some frustrations. There's a bit of a learning curve in, term, in terms of the right resin you want to use, what the print settings are, um, troubleshooting some of the things that I'm going to be talking about in later tips, and but just understand that there is a learning curve, and it's exciting, it's fun, but it can also be frustrating as you work through the, the different limitations because you're working with chemical reactions and things like temperature and layer height and all of the things that you set up in the settings of your printer are going to have an impact on the final product and you're going to have some failed prints. It's just part of the process. Tip number three is before you start printing, it's a really good idea to have some kind of enclosure for your printer, your wash and cure station, and your general supplies. Now I've got a video on my own enclosure setup that you can see right up there if you want to check my system out. But the general thing you want to know is that resin and IPA, if you're using that to clean, can be toxic. So it's best to enclose the fumes and ideally pump them outside so you're not breathing them all day. My setup only cost about $100, so it doesn't have to be a super expensive investment. But it's really important to take your health seriously and contain it in a system like this. Tip number four is to look for your resin manufacturer's print settings. If you're using Elegoo or any Cubic or Ministry of Resin or any other product, you'll want to go either on their website or look on Reddit for the, the recommended settings for the specific resin you're using and the printer you're using. Most manufacturers will have an Excel spreadsheet that either they've put together or they've worked with the community on, and that will give you a really good starting point on what to what you need to set all your settings in in the slicer program that you're using so that you have the best chance of having the most successful prints and the least amount of failed prints. Tip number five is to always start by doing calibration prints. When you first set up your printer and you've got the print settings from the manufacturer, it's a great idea to do a, at least one calibration print. I'm going to have some links to specific print files in the description below this video. But what these will do is help you make sure that you're getting the best, cleanest, most successful prints possible. So basically you'll print one of these out, you'll examine the quality of the print. Each calibration print usually comes with its own guidelines on what you're looking for. And this will just ensure that when you start to make other prints, whether it's miniatures or busts or bigger pieces, that you're not wasting a lot of time in resin by not having things set up properly. So don't sleep on doing calibration prints first. It's kind of a rite of passage when starting as a 3D printer. Tip number six. This one seems honestly pretty stupid, but take the step of looking up a, the recommended USB flash drive for your printer. Now, most 3D printers, I believe, will come with their own USB flash drive, but they're not made very well, so they're not gonna last very long. 
I made the mistake of spending 20 or 30 dollars on a really nice flash drive without understanding that it had to be paired, had to be compatible with the printer, thinking that they were kind of all universal. So I got this nice flash drive and I had a series of failed prints where it would start printing and then after a couple of minutes, my printer would just turn off and I couldn't understand what the deal was. Finally, I looked up what's the recommended flash drive for my printer, which is an Elegoo Mars 3 Pro, and I found a couple recommendations of specific links to specific USB drives, and I bought one of those, and I haven't had any problems since. Again, this seems silly. It's not something that I thought about was even possible, but hopefully this saves you frustration. Always look up what USB drive should I use for this printer, and you'll probably find an answer on Reddit or some other forum. Tip number seven is to keep in mind ambient temperature. Ideal temperature for resin 3D printing is 77 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 to 35 degrees Celsius. Because we're dealing with a liquid resin, the ambient temperature is gonna have an effect on how viscous it is, how quickly it flows into the space once the printer raises, and ultimately how successful your prints are. In the winter months, I typically do very little printing at all because of this. And there are some measures that you can take. Having it in an enclosure can help, um, but also taking some steps to add heat. I have a gun safe heater, which is just a rod that gets warm. But I've also seen people use fermentation belts, which is just a heated belt that they wrap around the vat of their resin 3D printer. And I haven't tried that, but I've seen people have good luck with it. So just know that you want to be printing in that certain window of ambient temperature for the best chance of not having a failed print. Tip number eight is to check out sites like My Mini Factory, Cults 3D, Thingiverse, and others to find STL files to print from. Now, each of these sites will have a lot of free options, but you'll also find a lot of great makers who you can subscribe to or buy single prints from, and this is a great place to start to find top quality prints. You can search for what you're looking for, whether it's fantasy miniatures, sci-fi vehicles, whatever it is, there's just so many makers out there. And so every day there are more and more STL files to choose from. I'll have links to a few of these sites in the description below. And in the future, I plan on doing a video on some of my favorite makers and some of the favorite prints that I've found in my two years of printing. Tip number nine is as you start printing, I recommend starting with pre-supported STL files. When you're using Lychee or Cheetubox or some of the other slicing programs, you can add your own manual supports, but this is kind of a whole other learning curve of its own. So when you're first starting out, start with pre-supported prints. That way you've got one less th thing to think about as you're dialing in your settings, as you're learning to use your resin, clean your prints, cure them and all of that, start with pre-supported prints. And then when you get comfortable with all of those other things, if you're feeling adventurous or if you find a print that you really like and doesn't come pre-supported, you can look into using the auto supports on your slicing program, which are getting better with each update. And then also take the step of learning how to add your own supports. Tip number 10 is to join a community like Reddit or Discord or some other forum where you can learn from the mistakes of others. The resin 3D printing community is growing every day and there are tons of people out there sharing their successes, their failures, lessons they've learned, asking questions, and so it's a great place to learn how to get better at resin 3D printing. One recommendation I do have is if you ever post a question to something like Reddit or one of the other forums, give as much detail as you can, such as your printer, the resin you're using, a screenshot of your, of your settings, and be very specific Otherwise, people won't be able to help you answer your question. And now for one more bonus tip. Tip 11 is just relax and have fun. A lot of the tips I just told you about may make this seem more daunting than you thought it would be, but that's a good thing. It's gonna make you walk into this a little more knowledgeable, a little more prepared to weather the storm, but that doesn't mean that it's always gonna be a struggle. Everyone's gonna have failed prints from time to time, but really it seems like magic to pour liquid into a vat set up your 3D printer, and then a few hours later, have a physical object that you made seemingly out of nothing. So it is a fun process, and hopefully these tips will make it more fun for you. If you found this video useful at all, please like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or other tips that you'd like to share with the community. 
I wish you the best of luck with your own resin 3D printing, and I've got a lot more videos to come on the alchemy of craft.